Well, we've been in this series. It's really our theme for all year, practice his presence. And we've been talking about the reality of every follower of Jesus living day by day and moment by moment in the presence of Jesus, that we can actually experience that in our life. Everything that we do, every moment, can, can, we can experience his, his presence. That's what Brother Lawrence talked about even in his little book, Practicing His Presence. So we've been talking about disciplines that will allow us and bring us into, into those moments. And I, I, I think it's a real spiritual thing. Um, that when we do, we discover something, and it's this, that the things of this world, the things of this earth, kind of begin to float away. In fact, one songwriter caught it this way, and some of you will remember this song, um, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus, Look Full in His Wonderful Face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in light of His glory and grace. And when we walk in His presence, each and every day, the worries and the concerns and those things that kind of have a way of engulfing us just begin to fall away. So we've been talking about practicing his presence. It's a journey, and every journey begins with a first step. And many of you have taken that first step. Um, I pray these past weeks you've taken your first step in setting aside time to read your Bible. And that just wasn't a part of your habit, part of one of the disciplines maybe that you practice, but you did. So you took that first step and you began reading, reading the Bible. Um, maybe it was prayer. We talked about prayer the last couple of weeks. And so you took a first step in setting aside time for prayer. And, and you're starting that discipline, practicing his presence, practice his presence in your, in your prayer time. It was the first step. But where every journey begins with a first step, every journey continues with a second step. And let me say this. Sometimes I think the first step is easier than the second step. I mean, sometimes that first step, yeah, that, that you know, I, I decided to do that, but then I got stuck on the second step. Have you ever... Have you ever stepped into like some mud? Or maybe for us the last couple of weeks it's been, it was snow. Maybe, you know, because it kind of snowed. And maybe you experienced this. You went to take a step and, and you, got, you got stuck. And, and your, your foot actually came out of your boot. Or maybe it was mud and you go like, man, I'm just, I'm just trying, but I'm stuck. Have you ever felt that way in like these disciplines or practicing his presence in your Bible reading or in your prayer life, like you took the first step, but all of a sudden, like you just, mm, something seemed to be holding you back and you, you felt stuck. This past week was a um, couple interesting moments for, for me personally. I, you know, I had this dream that was just horrible. It was just a horrible dream. And I have discovered this when the enemy attacks me, it will, it will usually be many times in, in the nighttime like, like that. And I dreamt this horrible dream, and the only thing I could do when I woke up from it, it was still during the night, I reached over and grabbed my wife, who prefers space when she sleeps, you know. And I grabbed her, and I just kept jerking her over to me because in those moments, I just needed her close. Um, and the next morning, I said, I just had this really bad dream. It was just an attack from the enemy, and I, I felt stuck. I felt like I couldn't get that foot out of the mud. And then one morning this week, I, you know, my, my morning time is what I call my Jesus time. And I know for many of you, that's your discipline as well, or maybe it's something that you just started. For others, it's, it's, it's in the later part of the day, but for me, it's, it's the morning. And I, and I really have grown to really love that time. And, and just sometimes I just sit in silence, and it's also my Bible ring. But on, on this morning, last week, I, I don't feel anything. I don't know if you've ever been there or not. But man, I was just sitting there and it was like, I'm stuck. God, I'm my I can't, I can't take the next step. I'm just stuck. And I sat there and I prayed and and I read my Bible and kind of lived in that discipline in the moment is what exactly what it was, and then went out through my day. And what I found, of course, is the sweet presence of Jesus comes around us in those moments kind of helps us along. Well, I don't know where you are if you're, you've taken that first step and maybe you feel stuck in the second step, but Paul really speaks 
to this very, very issue in 1 Timothy chapter 4, and I'm just going to read it to you. And it's in your Bible, it's beginning with verse number 7. He says, don't waste time arguing over godless ideas in old wives' tales. Instead, he says, train yourself to be godly. Train yourself. Physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better, promising benefits in this life and in the life to come. And he says, this is a trustworthy saying. Like, this is one you can trust, and everyone should accept it. This is why we work hard and continue to struggle. For our hope is in the living God who is the Savior of all people and particularly of all believers. This is why we work hard and we continue to struggle. Even though we, this foot might feel stuck, we continue to struggle. What is Paul saying? Well, I think he's saying a number of things in that, in that scripture. I think it really applies to practicing his presence or the disciplines that we've been talking about. He says this, don't, don't waste your things. Or you, don't waste your time on things that don't matter. Godliness and worthless are really close together. So don't waste your time on those things that really, really don't matter in life. But train yourself for those things that do. And training is discipline. It's interesting because that word training, um, we get our English word gymnasium from that. So think about going to the gym. So some of you do CrossFit or you, 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 go, you go to the gym and you train and it's a discipline that you've learned in, in life. And uh, Paul goes on to say, look, um, physical training that we do, physical training is only temporary, right? It's only temporary. So you may look, you, you, you may work really hard to look like this right here, right? I mean, get all, you know, muscled up and <laughs> these, these types of things. But this is, this is only temporary because not long before So that life comes and goes. But training for godliness, Paul says, is good for now and for eternity. So he says, give yourself to these things. And that's what we've been talking about. Give yourself to training in those things that matter now in life and in eternity. Give yourself to those things. It's, it's sometimes a struggle. Sometimes it's, it's, it's pulling your foot up. But here's the good news. We're, we're not doing this alone. We are not doing this alone. Are you grateful for that? I am because, because Peter says, look, look, God's given us everything that we need, everything you need and everything I need to live this life, to, to live a godly life. He's given us everything we need. And so um, what, that, what that simply means is this. His spirit lives in us. It's his spirit that empowers us to take the next step, even if we feel stuck. His Holy Spirit lives in us. He is the one who empowers us to put this foot here. This journey is just taking the next step. And so I've asked and going to continue to ask, what's your next step? What does it look like for you? Paul uses a word, and it's just it's practice. You've got to practice. you just got to do it over and over and over again again. So what's your next step in prayer? What's your next step in reading the Bible? And I want to share with you three words, and Mario and Dave are going to help me unpack these words today. And I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to ask us three questions as, as we do. We're going to talk about time, tech, and table. Everybody say time. Time, tech, and table. You go like, what do those three words have to do with, you know, practicing godliness. What do they have to, well, we're going to talk about that for, for just a, f a few moments. So um, practicing, redeeming time. So uh, I shared some time ago about how my, my, my habit, my practice is to kind of redeem time because I'll wake up at night and I just figured a long time ago, if the devil's going to wake me up, I blame it on him anyway, mm -hmm. um, then I'm going to redeem that time in prayer. And so I'll wake up and I'll, I'll just go through my prayer list that I have and begin praying with people. So we're going to talk about redeeming time. And what I hope is that what we discover, number one, of course, we all have the same amount of time mm -hmm. in a day. But in our day, we have the opportunity to redeem moments during the day where we can practice these disciplines, where we can, we can actually train ourselves 
in, in, in godly disciplines. So redeeming time. So what is that? Let's talk about it. Yeah, I was yeah. just thinking about, you know, redeeming time. I, I really have appreciated you talking about, in particular, the nighttime, because that even happened to me this morning. Like at 4 a.m., I was yeah. up, couldn't go back to sleep. I just thought, you know what, I'm going to do that very thing. Um, and just so took some time to just pray for my family. And, um, and that has been a practice when I find myself in the, uh, up in the middle of the night. Um, I think also in the morning, um, just with my routines and stuff going on, um, I, I like to do that, what's called that double dipping that, that you've talked about double as well. Dipping, so yeah. I find myself, um, as I'm eating my oatmeal and getting ready for the day, as I'm eating, I also feel like I'm taking in God's word. So that's when I kind of read scriptures is when I'm, when I'm eating my food. Um, I'm also eating God's word at that time and taking time to pray. So that's, that's a really significant time. And if I do go running, sometimes I'll just pop in um, my headphones and listen to a verse or two as I'm, yeah. as I'm going. So just, it's never my fastest run time when I'm listening to yeah. scriptures, but it is a good time. So. It's a good time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. No, I, I can relate to that. So, but, but redeeming time with every moment. So like eating and, and all that kind of, there's a time that you can take and go, you know, I'm, I'm going to think about this time differently now. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. Redeeming time. I'm look at this time differently. How can I use it to practice a discipline of prayer or even Bible reading, right? Mm -hmm. So anyway, maybe when you get older, you sleep less. <laughs> I'm, so. not, I'm I pointing know. to you, but yeah. whatever you. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. I, you know, when my alarm goes off, I, I try. I don't always do this, but I try to just wake up and go, Lord, just take this day. It's yours. And, and yeah. be with me and help me stay in tune with you. And then oftentimes I'll wake up in the shower and go, oh, <laughs> hi. And uh, so I'll pray in the shower after I wake up. Yeah, I honestly have never thought about the shower time. As, but yeah. Yeah. That's cool. And then oftentimes I'll go for a walk, and I like to put on praise music when I'm walking and just uh, get into a spirit of praise. And Yeah, so it's redeeming the time. Okay, yeah, so redeeming, rede redeeming time. And I, I, have, I have gone to, um, actually it's just it's new for me, this, this, this part. But I began, I'm an early riser anyway, and so I get up early, but um, I began praying that God don't let me sleep past so-and-so time. Wake me up. And I don't, I don't set an alarm, so I just wake up. But um, God, I, I want to get up by this time, um, so do not let me. And I have discovered that, like, that works. That's amazing. Right? Because I, I want to redeem a certain part of the time of my day for just my alone time, so wake me up. My, uh, my, my, my stepdad, my mom's husband, and after we were all gone, of course, um, I, he had a discipline of getting up at 2 o'clock in the morning. And he had a prayer list, and he did it every morning. Mm -hmm. He just redeemed that part of the time of his day um, for the Lord, 2 o'clock in the morning. So um, anyway, redeeming time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what else can you think of? Because my question is, then, for all of us and uh, online, help us out. Like, oh, this is what I do. It might be the shower. That's weird, but it might be the shower. It's not weird <laughs> if you redeem time, okay, for prayer. It's not. But how do you redeem time? So put it in the comments there and let's help out let's help out one another mm -hmm. but well i think even we're talking about in redeeming time just even the idea of, of written prayers becomes right. a thing right yeah and so i know you're talking about that as something that's important right i i write out prayers and so i have a prayer list and we'll talk about redeeming tech in, in just a moment but yeah those are times when i, I just feel like i focus better in those moments and in that time as i write mm -hmm. so Anyway, yeah, redeeming time. Now, let me give you some ideas, okay? You're going to see some ideas here on how others are redeeming time, and maybe you can latch on to one of these. I'm Kirk Marks, and this is my son, Judah. And uh, times that I find myself uh, praying is uh, a lot of the times as I'm at work or driving or whatever, I think of my kids or my wife, and um, I like to just pray a quick blessing over them and uh, ask God for wisdom for them. And then... Uh, one of the biggest privileges I have in my life is in the evening when I get to pray with my kids. And, um, I pray for God's um, wisdom in their lives and um, that he increases their faith and um, gives them hope and joy and he baptizes them in the Holy Spirit. And uh, I just think that's one of the greatest uh, privileges that I have in my life. Hi, I'm Micah. And the way I set aside time for prayer every day is I keep a little journal every night and I write 
by something beautiful I saw from God that day and what it means to me. And then I write a verse that captured my attention. Hi, my name is Ruthie Eaton. And uh, today I was asked to uh, share about how I pray and kind of um, living in the moment of, of praying consistently and, and making time for that. And honestly, my biggest one is when I can't sleep um, instead of, you know, just sitting there and sometimes I get really anxious. And so when that starts to kind of kick in, I have to remind myself of like, okay, I'm gonna pray. And so I just, I do it every night now. And it's also good to like pray for my friends. And so when I think about, you know, a friend and a memory pops in my head of, of someone, I, I usually will pray for them at that moment just so that it's a habit. So those are those are my two like top prayer times. Hi, my name is Emily. I'm a night shift ICU nurse, so sometimes um, my schedule can get pretty hectic and sometimes it's hard to find time to pray, but I know that I always have time when I'm laying down to go to sleep at night. Um, that time between being awake and asleep is always really restorative for me and a time for me to offer up and surrender my fears and the hardships of my day to Jesus. Hi, my name is Jamie. Uh, for me, what it looks like to um, spend time with God is is finding the time in my week that I can just talk to Him. And so when I look at my busy schedule, um, that time that, that I find most consistently, I get to spend just time uh, with Him is uh, when I'm in my car, when I'm driving around. Um, I spend a lot of time, I deliver, uh, and so I, I spend a lot of time in the car there and just going from place to place in my busy week, um, I take those moments to just have conversations with God uh, and, and listen to, uh, to worship and, and, and praise Him. And so those are moments where I really get to just spend time with Him. And uh, I really appreciate those moments. Hi, I'm Megan. Um, and as a mom of four kids, I don't have a lot of time to just sit down and, and pray and spend time doing that. And so um, one of the things I started a few years ago was to pray over my family members as I fold their laundry. So as I fold different articles of clothing, just praying um, blessing or praying for wisdom over my kids and, and my husband. So that's a way that I redeem the time. Yeah, this is some great ideas. You know, when I, when I first watched that video, I. Honestly, I was really getting a bit, a bit emotional, particularly listening to our youth um, pray and dedicate themselves so cool. to pray. It is cool. And so I popped in even last Wednesday night. Mario, you were speaking last Wednesday night, and the room is filled with kids who are worshiping God, and they're praying, and they're redeeming time for prayer. Well, I mentioned last week that we talked about what, what, do you, what does it mean when the Bible says pray without ceasing? Because, like, how do you, how do you live out that discipline? Like, how... Pray without ceasing, like, how do you do that? That's a tough one. I yeah. don't think any of us are there, right? No. We're, yeah. we're growing in that. Um, I told you I wake up in the morning and ask the Lord to just keep me close all day. That helps. Yeah. I think starting with the right, right attitude. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what Brother Lawrence said. You know, we can actually live in the moment where we go outside and, and we look at the creation of God and we go like, mm -hmm. man, the first thing that comes to our mind is, God, thank you. For thank you for the rain. Thank you for the mountains. Thank you for the green. Thank you for the sun. Mm -hmm. Thank you for all of it. God, we can actually be in that place where we are continually giving the Lord thanks. I say, if, you, if, you're, if you're a parent of a teen and you're teaching them to drive, you know exactly what pray without ceasing means. So, but we can, we can transfer that, right? right and your day's coming. So we can transfer that right, in, right, I think, into all life. And then written prayers, right? Mm -hmm. And so we can use written prayers as also a way of, of redeeming time. So mm -hmm. some of us like to read prayers. I have a, a book that a friend gave me. I think I mentioned it last week or week before, Every Moment Holy. Mm -hmm. And so um, it, there are uh, prayers written for like, I didn't know they were, uh, there was a prayer um, to change a diaper. <laughs> but you know there is. It's a thing. Yeah. Right. So like for, before you change diapers, I'm not sure while well, the, well, the kid is screaming and yelling, let me pray, you know, but... Um, prayers to change diapers, pray, prayers to welcome your pet home. Um, what I take from that is like there is, there is an opportunity at every moment to redeem that time and that, mm -hmm. that situation, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I mean, I was even reading, I mean, there are prayers for when you are done doing your business, like to pray a hallelujah <laughs> for that moment that just took place. I mean, to really give thanks. Thank you that that happened. It's a thing. It's <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> every moment, holy. 
Just saying. <laughs> that, okay. It's there. If, if I walk by uh, the bathroom, <laughs> I hear a hallelujah. I, I'm going to blame you. Okay. <laughs> so, oh, all right. Well, that's the point, though. Every, right? Every right. moment. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, it's like giving ourselves every moment. So, let well, me ask since, you a question. You know, we're, we're talking about sitting. So, yeah. uh, driving. Driving. Jamie mentioned it. Right. Years ago, my wife and I bought a car that had no radio. Mm. We had that car for 260,000 miles. I spent a lot of time in a quiet car. Yeah. And I found that praying when I drove was just awesome. And even now, I do have a radio in my car, but I, I like to turn it off and just pray. Yeah. Even if it's only six minutes from my house to church, you know, just spend that time just praising God or giving thanks or praying for someone in need. Yeah, yeah. double dipping or, re, or redeeming that time redeeming that you're driving. So the question is with time, what time can you redeem and give that time to the Lord? Consciously create that discipline. Uh, many of you, you get up in the morning and the first thing you got to do is take the dogs out or the pets outside. What if you took that time and you just begin to rethink that opportunity or while you're driving or while you're going to school, you're taking your kids to school or while you're preparing a meal or while you're cleaning up and, and you go, look, God help me, I'm going to redeem this time mm-hmm. in prayer. Okay, how about tech? So redeem time and redeem tech. So tech has got, and rightfully so, a pretty bad name, yeah, no kidding. right? And there is no doubt there's, there's discipline that we have to employ when it comes to tech. But my thing is like, we can actually redeem tech, maybe even redeem what the enemy meant for evil, actually for good. Mm-hmm. So redeeming tech in, in prayer and in Bible reading. So um, last week I asked this question to my team. I said, what prayer app do you use? Mm-hmm. So using technology, what prayer app do you use? And you mentioned one. Yeah, I mentioned one. I like yeah. to use Echo, and I, I like to use it, it in particular because it has this reminder feature um, for prayers. And so I'll use that as a way of, of putting in prayers at different hours of the day, 3, 6, 9, um, and then 6, 9 again, at uh, noon. And those are, just, those are prayers that just pop up, and uh, it just reminds me. And in my best moments, I will just read that prayer when the reminder comes up, pause whatever I'm doing, and just remember, yes, Lord, I believe in the resurrection. Or yes, Lord, I'm reminded um, that you are with me with whatever, whatever it is I'm going through. Just those little things to be reminded throughout the day. Um, and then there's another one just called pocket prayer that I use. And I use that to, to capture prayer. So when people say, hey, um, would you pray for me about that? Um, quite often I'll pull up my phone. And uh, it always is that awkward moment because I'm like, I'm like, no, I'm not just texting somebody. I actually want to capture your prayer because I know that if you ask me to pray and I leave this place, I'm going to forget. And so I want to use that as a way to remind myself to pray for those specific needs. Uh, so pocket prayer and echo are a couple yeah, that I prayer. use. So I don't use a prayer, uh, prayer app. I, you know, I've tried, but it just doesn't work for me. Um, so I use a different form of prayer. I'm share that in a moment. But I, I have an Open Doors app. So Open Doors monitors the persecution of the church throughout the world. And so I constantly get alerts for prayer for this country or for this country or this situation or this situation. So they, they pop up and they'll pop up all the time. So it's a piece of technology that I use to, to remind me and to alert me when I can pray for other countries and other believers who are under, under persecution. And so, yeah. I use an app called Prayer Mate, which is good, similar to Echo. And uh, I also set alarms on my phone. I do that for everything. But if someone has a special prayer need, they're having surgery or whatever, I'll set a, an alarm to remind me to pray for that. Mm-hmm. When you're talking about tech, though, I like low tech, too. Years ago, I heard a, a preacher talk about yeah. uh, he liked to teach people how to take a piece of yellow paper, cut it into squares, and then staple them together. And that was his, he called it the Little Yellow Prayer Brigade. brigade. I can never hmm. say that right. But uh, you just carry it around, keep it in your pocket, and uh, it's this low-tech, low-tech way to remember to pray. Okay. Yeah, I, so I think I'm kind of in between that and that, the kind of the prayer app thing. So I write out my prayer. So I, I use, do use a digital Bible and, and a digital note-taking um, app and so on. So I, I write out, it's not quite that way, but I write out my prayers and I have my prayer list that, that I use. So uh, maybe someday I'll check out the prayer app, but w- whatever it is, it, it's redeeming technology. So let me ask you a question. Where can you re- redeem tech? So here's what happens. Um, some of us go on Facebook and we get really mad really quick, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, what if we use that time when something came up instead of kind of getting mad or ticked off, what if it became a prayer moment for that person or that group of people? 
What if, what if we used technology in that way, right? Or whether it's, yeah, maybe so it's a news app or something. It's a good reminder. Yeah. I was thinking too about uh, version. Many of you use that the, yeah. the Bible reading tool. It's the Bible online. But I use it like, because it, it'll talk to you. You don't have to read. It actually is a, an oral Bible. So when I'm walking, I'll put on a psalm or something just for praise. And so that's another way to redeem the time. If I'm walking, I'll do that. Yeah, redeeming time and then redeeming that technology that allows you yeah. to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so mm -hmm. anything else? Redeem tech. Well, I think just in that realm, as you said, we always have an opportunity, regardless of what we see in the tech world, we can have a choice to just be frustrated or to do something about it. And even just that opportunity to say, you know what, I'm going to pray, as you were talking about, I think makes such a huge difference. Yeah. When I see something on Facebook, when I see something I don't like, to choose, I'm going to be frustrated. We get frustrated. But can we take that a next step and say, and I'm going to pray for those people. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So mm -hmm. what if we give ourselves to that discipline in the technology world? Mm -hmm. So redeem time, redeem tech, and then finally redeem table. So what's it mean? Well, table is synonymous with gathering, where, where we gather together. So um, in person here, we, we kind of have a big table, right? So we're all, how can we, re we redeem this time as we come together? How can, how can we redeem time in our homes, you know, around the table? So... Um, I remember mom raising all of us alone, and she would, she would have times when we gather in family devotions, she called it. So we would gather around the table. Sometimes it was in the living room, but that was our table. So just like neighborhoods have changed um, these days, really this whole idea of the table has changed too. So sometimes, you know, the table is actually the car on the way somewhere. So we're going to rede redeem that gathering time when we're in the car together. You just kind of touch on that a little bit. Um, so redeeming table. So what's that look like? Well, as you said, I mean, just in the realm of, of I mean, as my boys get older and life, I mean, like they're starting to reach out and go into different places. They're, they're getting out. And so um, there's just a need to have to be super extra intentional to say, like, we're going to have moments together to be, to be gathering at the table. And so literally, um, we just believe in, like, we're going to find a way to, to eat together. And even if that's five minutes in which we're just talking about life, talking about Jesus, talking about what's going on, just to f have that minute. And we might slam down food and keep going the way we're going, but just try to find those times. And my wife, um, when she takes, um, takes the boys down, um, we had scripture verses on the wall. So just even on the way down, it's like four or five minutes to the bus stop to drop them off. But it's just a sense of like, hey, let's just take some time to go over some scriptures that we memorized. Or do you remember that scripture that was on the wall? Which one was A or which one was B? And, and just constantly trying to keep this rhythm um, of these boys being trained and thinking about what does it mean to be having God's word hidden in their hearts? Yeah, so that's, that's a form of table yeah. on the way, yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. I've been part of two small groups in the okay. last few months, yeah. one on Wednesday and one on Friday morning. And in both those situations, at the end of our study of the Bible and what we're talking about, we always take time to take prayer requests and pray for one another. And I find that so encouraging. When people, you know, they hear from my heart, I'm open with them, and they pray for me, it's just so uplifting. And to do the same for them as they open up the real needs in their lives to pray for each other in those gathering settings. It's just marvelous. Yeah, it is. So the question is like, what does your table look like? So maybe it's not just like gathering around a real like dinner table, but what does your table look like? It might be the ferry ride, right, over to work. And so you have a group of people that you always gather with right here. Can you redeem that time? Is it possible? The time on your way to school, the time uh, spent together on the way to the grocery store, running errands. Those are table times that we can redeem and say, look, let's just let's take a few moments or let's discipline ourselves during this time. Let's redeem this time and practice this discipline of prayer and, and being in the Word. Mm -hmm. it's important I have a, to have a special friend that I like to see for coffee every once in a while. And uh, one of the things we do kind of organically is we'll just start praying yeah. for, for each other's families and needs mm -hmm. we know about. And that is just marvelous. I think if I remember right, I was actually talking to you on the phone. I called you, and you were with your friend. And I think you were walking through a cemetery. I was, yes, with our dogs. Yeah, not, yeah. <laughs> not, not sure the location, but in other words, that was a time, right? Yeah. And redeeming that time that you're Absolutely. talking about. We were sharing with each other, redeeming it that way, but also praying for needs in our families and so yeah. on. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. And even at the end of the evening, um, we I gather up with the boys, and we'll just go through and read through scripture together. I think it's just even before we lay our heads down at night, we just try to find the moment. You know. Yeah. Um, any little way that we can, like, can we just infuse into their life and into my life? I need those moments. So, any ways that we can, just be reminded of God, reminded that God is a part of this, our lives, it needs to be central and focused. So, yeah. yeah. And then, so Jen and I. So it's actually Jen's idea. Um, she goes like, what if we shut off the TV at night? You know, sometimes we watch it, we'd watch the news, that type of thing. Mm-hmm. And so we have done that. I'm not, I'm not suggesting that anybody else should do that. That was just personal to us, you know. Right. But um, we did that. And I tell you, it's been incredible. Sometimes we'll watch the Weather Channel or the Food Channel, those two. Um, but all the other things, we go like, we're, we don't need that. And we have, you know, for us, we've just kind of redeemed some time. And then at night... Uh, often use this book every moment holy and we'll that will be our table time right and we'll redeem that time for just a moment in this particular prayer prayer book so the question is what's your table and where can you redeem some moments and some time to practice this discipline practice the presence of jesus in prayer and in the word and in recognizing who he is. See, just in a few moments, we're going to gather around the table. So we're going to redeem time here in person and online. So I'll invite you to get your elements ready, whatever they, they look like, their symbols. We're going to redeem time. We're going to gather around the table. But I just encourage us to take this discipline and live it out this week. I would love to hear how you're doing it online or in person. Maybe what new discipline you have put into your life. Maybe it's while you're driving to work or maybe you're walking the dog, taking the dog out. You're a parent. You're driving your kids to school. It looks different for all of us, but let's help one another. How will we redeem time? What can we do? How will we redeem tech? And how will will we redeem table? So, Father, we just give these three areas to you today. Help us, I pray. God, for some of us, it means we just need to to reorganize and we need you to just to speak to us. We need to reorganize our time, our tech, our table, and uh, give give that to you. Help us, Lord, to practice your presence in these areas in in life, Lord, to your honor and to your glory, I pray in Jesus' name. The team's going to come out and lead us in in worship. And these are the moments where I'm just going to encourage you to to um, just pause, take some time to consider what Jesus has done for you and for me, um, and then share in communion as you, as you feel led. So we'll all do it at different times, online and in, in person. But let's just take a few moments and just redeem this time, saying, Jesus, I give you thanks and I give you praise for all that you've done. And then when you feel um, like you would like, you share in communion. 